Imagine for a moment if you could take your control panel out of your CE6000 cutter and somehow place it into your computer as a software application. Essentially, that is what the GraphTech cutting controller does. All the settings that are within the control panel of your CE6000 can be controlled from this software application. There are some additional benefits to this as well. First, rather than having to sift through different menus on the cutter, you can easily access the majority of settings from the controller. Second, you have the ability to set up a multitude of conditions, label them with specific names, and then upload them to the cutter so that you can actually see the label on the cutter's control panel. This makes it easier for seeing what material each condition is used for on the control panel, rather than just condition 1 through 8. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the controller effectively. Next, we'll install the controller software. To start, insert the CE6000 DVD into the DVD drive. Click Run Multi Setup. You may get this user account control message asking if it's okay to install the multi setup application. Click Yes. This will open the CE6000 software installation application. Click on the Install CE6000 software button and follow the step by step process. At this point, the installation program is asking if you'd like to install the CE6000 driver. Click OK. Click Next. And Next again. This will bring up this window that will ask what port you will be using to communicate to the cutter. Choose the port you'll be using. In our case, we will be using the USB port. And then click Next. Once the driver is installed, click OK. This will bring us back to the main menu. Click Exit. Finally, turn the cutter on. Initialize the cutter by pressing the 2 key for Roll 2 on the control panel. To open the plotter controller, click Start at the bottom of your PC window, then click All Programs. Scroll down the list to find GraphTech Cutting Plotter Controller for CE6000. Click on the folder and then click on the application. This will start the Cutting Plotter Controller, or Controller for short. Probably the most powerful feature of the controller is the media list and conditions. The controller allows for 100 different media type presets. Any one of the media type presets in the media list can be assigned to one of the eight conditions of the cutter. Let's first go over setting up individual media types for the media list. First, we'll click on this Edit Media List button to examine all the different media types in the list. You'll notice that there are nine types of media in the current list here. Most of these are common medias that would be cut in a typical sign shop. Take note, though, that the nine media types may not necessarily be configured to a certain type of media, such as vinyl or reflective, but can be configured for a type of cutting. For instance, notice at the bottom of the list, there's a media type preset for cutting smaller letters. If you look across, there are different columns of settings, such as speed, force, acceleration, and blade type for each of the media types. By using the scroll bar below, we can scroll to the right and view the other variables for the selected condition. For instance, we can check if tangential emulation is enabled for that condition or not. The buttons on the far right hand side feature choices of whether we want to create a new media type, edit a media type, delete a media type, and if we want to copy a media type. Let's start by creating a new media type. When creating or editing media type, always load that media into the cutter prior to configuring the media type settings, so that a test cut can be performed later. If you notice on our list, we have the media that's labeled Outdoor Vinyl. Perhaps though we have two types of Outdoor Vinyl. So what we'll do here is create a new Outdoor Vinyl media type and label it with the manufacturer and model type. 
Then we'll take the current outdoor media type and rename it to reflect the manufacturer and model type. So first we'll click on the new button. That will bring up this small window which allows us to enter the settings for that type of media. The first entry is the name of the media type. In this case, the label will be Arlon DPF 4500GX. This type of vinyl uses a standard blade, the CB09U. We'll set the force at around 14, and the speed will set to a 45. The acceleration will keep the same since it's a standard type of vinyl. Next we can check the settings by pressing the test cut button here. Then after checking the cut test pattern on the vinyl, we can make further adjustments. Or we can just click OK and it will add this media type to our list. Let's now go ahead and take the other outdoor vinyl media type, adjust the settings, and then rename it to the media's manufacturer name and model number. First we select the media type, then we click on the edit button, and here we can make the adjustments. In this case, the force is a little too low, so we want to raise it up to about 15 or 16. Next, we'll rename the media type with the manufacturer's name and model number. In this case, we'll call it the Arlon DPF 456 GTX. As you can see, this is a pretty simple process. Let's test these settings by pressing one of the three test cut buttons. The top one will cut the test pattern three times, each with a different force. The middle will cut the test pattern three times, each with a different offset. The bottom one will cut one test cut pattern. In this case, we'll use the bottom one again. If you are new, you may want to use the top test cut button until you get more familiar with the cutter. Let's create another media type specifically for cutting sandblast resist. So we can click on new. We can label it with the make and model of the sandblast resist. We will set the blade type to a CB15U K60, which is a blade that is specifically designed for cutting through thicker materials such as sandblast. By the way, if you don't know what blade type to use, there's this button, About Blades. Clicking on it will open up another window where it gives us a matrix of blade types, blade holders, and their part numbers. Next, we'll set the force to around 25 to start with, the speed at 20, and we'll lower the acceleration to 1 for better handling of the corners. With these type of thick materials though, we want to take advantage of some of the other condition settings such as tangential emulation and overcut. To access these settings, use the advanced button at the bottom of the window. When this button is clicked, it will reveal the more advanced settings for the conditions. Let's go ahead and enable tangential emulation by setting it to mode 1. In the lessons about conditions, we learn that mode 1 will overcut on each corner, whereas mode 2 will only overcut on the start and end point of each cut element. Let's increase the overcut value to 0.1 for both the start and end points. You'll notice this added setting that we really haven't gone over, distance adjustment. This is a value that corrects any deviation in the length of the cuts or plotted segments. These deviations can occur depending on the media being used. This value is specified as a percentage of the total distance. For instance, if you were to cut a 4-foot strip and the actual strip measured out a little shorter than the 4-foot strip, the distance adjustment setting can correct for this. What's nice about this setting is that it can be assigned to a media type, which gives the accuracy for that type of media without disturbing the cutter's other condition settings. Finally, let's go ahead and press the Cut Test button. Check the cut pattern, and if everything checks out, we can click OK. 
Next, we'll add in a number of different media types that we would like to use. Looking at the media list, you'll notice that there are some media types that have been assigned to a condition. To assign a condition to a media type, first select the media type, and then click on the condition number to assign the media type. Once the media list has been set up with the media types and the condition number that they're assigned to, we can just click close and get back to the main controller menu. As mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, conditions can be assigned a media type. Once the media types with their settings are assigned to a condition, these can be uploaded to the cutter. This is one of the more powerful features of the CE6000 and its controller. Once clicked, it will then overwrite the cutter's eight current conditions, five if the cutter is in simple menu mode. By clicking on the Upload Setting to Cutter button, the new condition settings will be uploaded to the cutter. As you can imagine, this is obviously a much more efficient way of setting up the conditions in the cutter. When you are through with this video, we suggest that you open up your controller and set up the media list with all the different medias that your shop uses. This way, for the media types that you use more frequently, you could quickly assign them to their respective conditions and then simply upload them to the cutter. If the six buttons here look familiar, they should be. Recall that when the pause menu button is pressed in ready mode, this screen appears. These buttons on the controller will allow you to adjust the same settings as found on the cutter's control panel when the pause menu key is pressed. For instance, if we want to enable sorting, we can press the tool button and click the on radial button to enable sorting. Let's click OK and return back to the controller. If we want to expand the area between the wheels, we would click Area and then Expand. Here we have a choice of Default or Set Expand Limit where a value can be entered. As you can see, the controller is as if you have a virtual version of the control panel on your computer.